yourselves, tell us your name, which I will state, but you can always restate, uh, what role you'll be playing in Luella's script, as well as how your roles in Young Storytellers Big Shows are different from other roles that maybe you've played outside of Young Storytellers. Uh, Adam, can we have you start? Hi, my name is Adam, and uh, the roles that I've played Young Star oh, I'll be playing Barack Obama and the Coconut Man in this thing today, and uh, in this play, and uh, the roles in this, I mean, they can be anything. It can be a tree, a, a house, an alien. I mean, it's, it's, there, is, there is no guessing what you'll get, and I love it. So thank you a lot. Thank you so much, Adam. Brandon. Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm playing uh, Timmy, the two-foot-tall baby. And I guess that's the difference from the characters I've played when I was an actor, is that I was never a two-foot-tall baby. Thank you, Brandon. Um, Casey, can I have you introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, Brandon. Hi, I'm Casey. Uh, I am narrating this amazing, weird, wacky, fun script. Luella, this is cool, so cool. Uh, I've been with Young Storytellers for a bit, too. Uh, and uh, this, this, the roles I've played in the big shows are very different from regular life roles in, in Hollywood because they're way more fun. Way more fun. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Lexi, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, hi, I'm Lexi. Um, I will be playing Death in this script, so spoiler alert. Uh, but the roles that I get to play at Young Storytellers tend to be a lot more fantastical in like a really wonderful way, like a laser goat or a death. So I'm very excited about this. Thank you, Lexi. Nancy, how about you? Hi, I'm Nancy, and I'll be playing the screw. Um, I mean, only at Young Storytellers do I get to bring to life objects like that and hear the minds of amazing fifth graders. And I never get that chance outside of Young Storytellers. Thanks, Nancy. All right, Ryder, how about you? Hi, I'm Ryder. Um, I will be playing the role of Bob, the talking squirrel. Uh, I am also the head mentor at Luella's school, so I got to help her um, and all her fellow classmates write their scripts last semester, including this awesome one. Um, and actually, even though I've been involved with Young Storytellers for a bunch of years, I have never done a, a, a big show before. So this is my first big show. Uh, but yeah, obviously playing uh, a talking squirrel has, has never happened in my life, so this is great. Thanks, Luella. Very exciting. All right. Uh, last but not least, Tony. Hey, I'm Tony Hale. How are you? I am very excited to be here. I've worked with storytellers for a while, and I can honestly say I've never played the characters that I've played in storytellers, and I probably never will. I was a chair once. I was a fart machine once. So I don't know if I'll ever play a fart machine again. So that was really exciting, and I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Tony. Oh, uh, I love to have Luella and your mentor and her mentor Drew uh, introduce the script. So, actors, while you prepare for taking on this role of a lifetime, can I have you mute your video? Um, and Luella and Drew, I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about this. Luella, first off, uh, how are you doing today? I am amazing. Amazing. That's a, that's a good way to be. Uh, Drew, how did you get involved in Young Storytellers? Well, I'm on the uh, Royal Sacred Neighborhood Council with a writer, and he had brought it to our uh, youth and education meeting. I thought it sounded like a lot of fun. Uh, the whole council supported it, and I signed up to be a mentor. Super awesome. Well, we're really excited. Um, Luella, what inspired your script? Um, well, there's this TV show uh, uh family guy i took the baby concept i took that and i just yeah and then and then all the other stuff i've had in my head for a while so i was like hmm maybe i should do this and so yeah that's how i came up with the skit great well, well we're very glad that you did and very excited to get to reading this. Um, Drew, what was it like to work with Luella? 
Well, every week she come in, she's like a really has just this great energy. And so she would come in every week with a ton of energy and a lot of creativity. And we were just putting so much down to, I was often was like, oh my God, we're going to have more, we're going to have a feature film by the end of this. Cause there's just so much coming out, but uh, we were able to edit it and, and it was just really fun. Awesome. And last, but not last question, but one of my favorite questions, Luella, if you could say anything to any other young storytellers watching in the audience or any of your adoring fans out there, what do you have to say to them? Um, imagination. Very inspiring. Imagination is what makes the world go round. And I'm so excited that we get to share a little piece of your imagination today. Timmy and Bob go on an adventure to find a missing screw. Timmy and Bob, The Time Machine Invasion by Luella Brown, mentored by Drew Pan Panessa. Exterior, fourth dimension, infinity. Timmy and Bob are traveling through time on a brand new time machine. There are lots of weird things flying by, such as clocks and heads of people in history like Barack Obama. <laughs> no, hey, hey, take me with you. Take me with you. Uh Timmy, two foot tall baby, too, points as Barack passes by. Who is that Barack Obama? No, wait. Bob, five foot tall talking pet brown squirrel, is freaking out as they travel through time. He pauses as Barack Obama passes. Yep, that was definitely Barack Obama. Wait. As they continue to travel through time, Bob notices a bright red button next to the time machine controls. There is a sign over the button that says pointless button. Bob acts odd. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, no! Bob puckers his lip and twiddles his fingers and giggles while staring at the button. <laughs> Red button! Right before Bob can press the button, Timmy grabs his hand. No! Bob is too strong for the little baby and presses the button with his pinky finger. The time machine makes a loud boom and loses a single screw. The screw floats away. Timmy begins to cry. Bob feels sad. Timmy stops crying. Now we're going to be stuck in this dimension forever. Exterior, dark forest, night. Immediately after Timmy says they, they, they find themselves in a dark forest with cobwebs and bunny poop everywhere, Timmy looks around at his surroundings. Where are we? I don't know, but we must be in a forest because it's dark and there are trees everywhere. Bob then steps into bunny poop. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, there's bunny poop everywhere? Um, okay, let's get on to finding the screw. <laughs> Timmy and Bob start walking to find the screw. They have no idea where to go, so they walk straight for a bit and then make a left, then a right, then straight again, then another left. All of a sudden, they see the face of evil King Bunny. Hmm. I think we just found a giant bunny. This is very crazy. I agree. Shh, be quiet. Evil King Bunny hears Timmy and Bob. What are you doing here? Uh, hello, uh, we're trying to find a missing screw for my time machine. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to help you. This makes Timmy mad. You can't talk to me like that! Timmy and Evil King Bunny start waving their hands at each other while turning their heads away. They never end up touching in this attempt to fight. Evil King Bunny Army, assemble! Timmy gets angry and pushes past the bunny army, knocking them all ah. to the ground. Then he drags Bob along by the arm. Just come on, Bob. We've got other things to do. Why do you do this to me? I wanted to walk myself out. They manage to get out of the forest and away from Evil King Bunny and his army. As they make it out of the forest, the time machine glitches and sends them to an alternate world. Ooh. Exterior, coconut forest, day. Timmy and Bob appear in the alternate world and fall on their faces softly. They get up and see pretty surroundings. They are in the coconut forest. It is shiny and pretty. The trees are covered in sparkles and the palm fronds are silver and gold. There are very nice unicorns. Ah, that hurt. We came into a different universe. Again. Why me? We need to find that missing screw now. Fine! Don't scream at me! Bob starts to look around for the screw. 
All right, come here, little screw. Bob sees the screw. The screw taunts Bob. Come and get me. Bob starts running after the screw in circles. Suddenly the screw disappears, but Bob continues to run in circles. Bob, it's gone. Bob notices a red button on a golden stool. The button is very, very red and shiny. It's as big as a window. <laughs> red button! Bob runs fast towards the button, pressing it with both hands. I'm not even going to try to stop you. I know you're just going to press it. After pressing the button, all these coconut men fall from the trees. They attack Bob and Timmy. <laughs> We're going to poke, take our fingers and poke, pokey, pokey, poke. <laughs> Wait, there are two inch tall coconut men trying to poke us? Yep. Should we just walk over? Yeah, yeah let's just walk over them. <laughs> poke you? I tried to poke you. <laughs> Timmy picks up one of the coconuts and throws him hard into space. <laughs> I poke you! Okay, who's next? The coconuts, now scared, run away. Suddenly there's another glitch and the time machine sends them away once again. Interior, the underworld, afternoon. There is lava everywhere. In a chair made out of various bones is a dark figure with a sip in his hands. I knew this would happen. Who are you and how did you know any of this would happen? Oh, uh, um, yeah, this is death. I met him a long time ago when I was just um, one years old. You know, thanks for beating all the bad guys. Uh, makes going to the grocery store a lot easier. <sighs> I'm gonna fix your time machine for you. Oh, oh wow. wow. Thanks. thanks. I can't believe someone this powerful would help us. No problem. It's time to send you back. Death waves his hand and Timmy and Bob disappear. Exterior, fourth dimension, infinity. Bob and Timmy appear at their time machine. The screw is back in place. The screw transforms back into a regular screw. Uh, death was actually pretty chill. Maybe we shouldn't have judged him, um, you know, and how he might seem. Yeah, I guess you're kind of right. <gasps> Red button! Oh no, come on. The end. <laughs> nice.